Dawn is with us. Dawn's in Cincinnati. Hi, Dawn. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. We love your show. Thanks for what you do. Well, thank you. How can we help today? Yeah. Um, so I have a niece. She'll be the first one to go to college in her family. And um, she wants to be a teacher. And we listen to your show enough to know the college should coincide with the career path you choose and when it comes to what you're willing to pay. She has received an $18,000 scholarship, but she would like to go to Xavier University, which is about 52 a year. Um, and she wants to graduate with her teaching degree. And my brother has tried over and over to tell her that that is not a good choice. She's even gotten a full ride to a quote unquote, in her mind, lesser school. Um, he's even tried to bribe her um, saying, go to that school and I'll pay for your final year at Xavier. And then you can graduate from there. She's just not listening to any of us. And we don't want her to get you know, having eighty to a hundred thousand dollars in debt, being a teacher. Um, so, do you have any resources, or what have you done in the past to maybe help these kids to realize this probably isn't the best decision? Duct tape. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and bailing wire. You can go to Tractor Supply, your local Tractor Supply, and get all of your get a chair, duct tape yeah, to yeah. a chair. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right? I'm kidding. I'm tempted, but oh my gosh. So she's a stubborn brat teenager. Uh, definitely. Yeah. And usually those are formed she's, by stubborn brat parents. And she's already an education snob. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so John uh, John has a PhD in higher ed and has been the uh, dean of students at expensive schools and um, other various important positions at expensive schools. So what do you, how do you fix this, John? Well, there, you got you got a couple of problems here. One is is usually this attitude is formed somewhere in the home, right? So often parents will try to wait to the last minute and correct behavior that they may have been a part of. And so if there's any sort of elitism or they're dumb, I can't believe they're driving that car. That's where a parent sits down with a teenager and says, "Hey, my attitude has been wrong for the last 15 years, and I'm sorry." Right? That's not going to cure this problem overnight, but that's like you've got to start with that level of humility and normally not always, but this kind of attitude that I see in 17 year olds and 18 year olds, come on, man. Um, that usually comes somewhere from inside the house. The second thing is, is this some places you can, some you can't, some it's hard. I would re I would sit down and say, I will not co-sign for anything. I will not, at some point you got to draw some really hard boundaries. Um, I'm not going to support this. You're not going to take my car with you. You're not going to take my phone plan with you. Some of these things sound draconian and mean, but you're trying to keep a kid from making a hundred thousand dollars mistake, right? With, a, not, with an unformed brain. Right. <laughs> Their brain is not fully formed at 17. You're holding a, 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 uh, uh, a full ride to a state school, right? It, it's it it just doesn't work mathematically. It doesn't work professionally. And here's another thing I would do: I would get a teacher that this person that that she trusts. Oh, that's good. It's got yeah. student loan debt, and you say I will pay for the dinner, or I'll de the parents will pay for coffee, and go say go sit down and ask them if it's worth it. Because I had this happen. My friend Randall. I had coached basketball at the high school level, and then I was uh, working at a university, and his son was five or six, and he said, this is so obnoxious. Will you go outside and tell my son to dribble a basketball like this? I said, why don't you go tell him? And he goes, because he's going to listen to you right now. And so there's something about somebody else saying it sometimes. And so send her out with a teacher that she respects and looks up to, and that teacher will hopefully set her right. That's good. Thank yeah. you for that. Appreciate but at the end it. of the day, parents really, like, I, I, I've heard this uh, uh, once, I heard a thousand times. Well, I'm not going to, like, take away their car or their phone. I'm still going to put $500 in their account every month. I just think they're making a bad decision. And I always No, you're financing their bad that's decision. That's right. I want look at the parent and say, how far are you willing to support your kid making bad choices? Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm not going to take away their car. They're only doing cocaine. I mean, it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, that's the kind of thing. So, yeah, it's... Uh, and going to a private school is not mean you're doing cocaine, but you know what we're saying here, right? You're financing yeah. the 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 lack of wisdom there. So what we used to tell our teens uh, about various things because was that uh, I would look at one of them that was losing their mind and they're 16 years old and I would say, 
Listen, there's two people that live inside your body right now. There's a four-year-old and a 34-year-old. If I can talk to the 34-year-old, we'll have a discussion about persuasion. If I'm talking to the four-year-old, I'm going to freaking tell you what to do, and I'm going to make you do it physically. Now, like I would a four-year-old, you're going to behave in my house. Now, we can discuss this, and I can tell you why that's important and why you're building character, and we can have a persuasive discussion, or I can just make you. Now, what do we want to do here? And so, and I'm going to do that here. I'm going to just sit down and say, this is a dumb but asinine decision. And I feel like I'm negotiating with you like you hold any cards in your hand. You don't hold any cards. I have all the freaking money. I own your life. You are not an adult. I still get to tell you what to do. And so now we can have a discussion like two logical adults about this. And Xavier is not evil, but the number of schools that she applies to go to, you apply to go to school to, honey, that actually care where you got your teaching degree is precisely zero. Unless you want to work at Xavier. And then they will care that you went to Xavier. But short of that, you know, you're signing up for Cincinnati City Public Schools. Zero chance you get the job because you went to Xavier versus went to the other school. Absolutely, precisely zero. There is no data on the planet to justify this aristocracy crap in higher ed. That these famous schools that are triple, quadruple, 5x expensive are worth a penny more than the others. They're not. Now, might you learn a little bit more? Maybe. But the idea that you're going to do better as a teacher, the idea you're going to your career is going to be on a fast track because you paid 5X is zero. It's a it's asinine. I want I want to know why why why, why does she want to go to Xavier? Why is she so set on it? Well, um, she said that it is one of the best programs. Uh, in the state for teaching. So, so here's what I'm going to do. I hear that from teenagers all the time. Prove it. Show me. Sit down and show me what the, what the rankings mean, where the front. I want you to prove that it's a $100,000 difference. Why is this car worth $100,000 more than this other car? Show me. Prove it. We'll prove 17 it. 17-year-old, prove it. Both of them will get you to the market. That's right.